know that healthcare is changing rapidly, and we have to uh, find better ways of delivering healthcare at a much less um, cost without sacrificing the quality of the care. And so we began with a project that I came with to Naomi with the idea that somehow we'd love to replicate the old-fashioned house call to be able to go into the home and, and kind of provide care as we did when we were uh, in the 1940s, 50s, where people actually went to your house. Um, but of course, in the modern day, it's impossible. We have thousands and thousands of patients, and how do we do that? But because of telehealth and telepresence, we can do that by placing a unit into the home. So we decided to work with a company called Vigo. And the important part about Vigo is that it's able to move. So what we do is we put these units into the home. And the reason we wanted the robot to move with the patient is because initially we thought that it was important to see the patient in their natural setting, so in their bed, in the bathroom. For example, we, after surgery, we want to see what the color of the urine looks like. Is it really bloody or is it normal? So sometimes the parents can't capture it. They, they say, well, it's in the toilet. So if we have a robot that moves, we can actually look into the toilet and actually see what it looks like. Or you can imagine an orthopedic doctor who repaired a child's leg and you want to see them climb the stairs or move around the home. So we really felt that there was many different ways of utilizing a mobile unit. Um, so we launched a study that uh, was basically a pilot study. So children who've had urological surgery, a lot of them do require monitoring, but not the level that you have to be in the hospital for, but more than what parents can provide. So we thought these were the perfect patient population to send a robot home with them so that they could take care of these kids, provide that high quality care that we've always been wanting to have, but not having to spend the money of them staying in the hospital. So we sent the kids with these urological uh, uh, surgeries and they've gone home with them. We do our post-operative care and we found something amazing, <laughs> which was something completely unexpected. I was doing this for my own benefit of being able to take care of patients at home. What I actually found was the most important result from the study was, believe it or not, the kids became more engaged in the healthcare. They suddenly cared about what was going on with them. They suddenly cared about what surgery they had and why they had it. And they cared about what they should do in the future to keep themselves healthy. And I thought for a long time, well, what, how did that happen? And it was very subtle. It was came into situations such as the child, when he came home from school, ran directly up to the robot and started talking to the robot. Or the little girl wanted to dress the robot up because I was naked. What they did was they actually formed a bond between themselves and their family with the robot. And the robot also provided a like a central um, mechanism by which the family and the child could discuss the surgery. And it really organized their health care around this robot. I think part of it is the mobility. If something moves on their own, you're more likely to believe it to be an entity rather than a desktop computer or Skype. If you have those, most kids, we, we, what we have learned so far is these kids still view those as computers, as objects. However, as soon as a robot moves, there's somebody on the other side looking at them, talking to them, you really get the idea that this is something truly different than your computer. And that's what engaged the kids, believe it or not. I mean, it sounds dumb, but it really became something where these kids start going, well, why do I have reflux? And, or the kids go, well, you know, so if I drink more water, that means I won't get these infections, right? So kids are starting to preempt a lot of the things that we've been trying to do. So the benefit of having a Vigo, just to summarize quickly, from a physician's side, we're able to monitor them, deliver a monitor level monitoring that is uh, higher than what we can normally provide, but at a cheaper price than having them to be in the hospital or having a nurse come to them. Uh, from a physician side, you have that security of knowing that you're just not letting the patient go home to nothing, that they, you can be in constant communication with them. But the added benefit is on the patient side, which is to really develop a way to engage healthcare and develop a way where the family can kind of centralize their healthcare and discussion around an object and the object become personified to a real human being. So this guy actually is a representation of me, believe it or not. Early on, this is just a telecommunication device. All it has is the ability for move and for ability to talk. So those are my legs, and this is my eyes, in a sense. 
but we're going beyond that. We're developing modules that will go in here that will take uh, monitoring to the new level. You can pee into it and you actually can analyze the urine. Or for a diabetic, you can prick your finger and the blood sugar can be monitored. Or an asthmatic patient, we can blow into a machine and then that will be relayed to the doctor or the nurses. And remember, you could do this asynchronously. It means that a doctor doesn't have to sit at his computer 24-7. This can all be uploaded. The doctor can deal with it on his office hour. If there's something emergent, they can be called in to an on-call pager. But otherwise, they can be asynchronously. But that allows you to participate with your patient longer, rather than a very specific amount of time. We're in charge of developing the brain of the robot. So the brain of the robot is now going to allow the patient to walk through their health care. And there are going to be some spontaneous prompting, learning exercises, things like that. So the robot will really truly be a robot where there's an artificial intelligence. Uh, we're building in reminders. So some kids have to pee at a regular interval. The robot will be able to tell you that, saying, it's time for you to pee. And the kid goes, well, why do I have to pee? And it will launch into an educational module about why it isn't necessary for you to do that. We really believe that this application is more for those chronic care. Some of the larger diseases like hypertension, diabetes, weight, uh, weight issues like uh, bulimia, anorexia, obesity. This is where the robot could be really helpful because the continuous presence, the continual reminder that this is, an, this is something you have to do every day to keep yourself healthy, instead of me doing that every single day, which I can't, this guy will.